What is going on everybody? Today we're going to talk about something that I think is super awesome and I think a lot of people don't know, even know about it. Even if you do know about it, you might not even know the full extent of how you can use this. And this is the Retouching Toolkit Color Wheel. The color wheel itself is amazing because it gives you the option, the ability to color grade in Photoshop similarly to how you do it in Capture One. If you're not familiar with that, um, basically and simply put, you can color grade an image in your shadows, midtones, and highlights just by moving a wheel around. I really have wished for a long time that this was available in Photoshop, and now it's finally here. And let's just take a look and jump into it. So now the color grade, the color grading wheel itself is very easily to easy to use, but you have to do some things to start off with. And number one is you got to make sure you're actually adding the curve first. So on the top over here, when you actually get it installed and all that good stuff, and I'll link the description below, I'll link the link in the description below for those of you who want to check it out. But um, you want to make sure that once it's loaded into Photoshop, you have this interface open. And the first thing is over here on the presets tab, make sure you click on small. And that way, if you're working on a laptop on a smaller screen, you get the icons fitted nicely like this that I have here. So you can see your image. If you actually use like large, um, this is great if you are actually working on a bigger screen or 32 inch or a, a gargantuan 60 inch TV or something like that. But for me, I'm working on a laptop now. So I want to make sure that it's the icons fit perfectly. The next thing is we actually want to hit create on the top left where it says RGB and that'll set up a curve for us here. It sets it up and then if I come down to my wheels, we're going to jump in and start playing with them by moving the sliders. I'm going to call it a slider. So if it's not a slider, I'm really sorry, Connie, but I'm going to call it one right now or, or the point on the color wheel. And, and if I move them to their respective color, it does what you think it does. It actually color grades it so that my highlights um, are yellow, which is identified here on this little saturation bar. You can see it says blue. It doesn't say it looks blue. And over here on the right, it's, it's yellow. And that's pretty much what it does. So if you want specific colors in specific regions, it does that for you. Now, let's take a look at the curve itself here. Make sure you have your properties open. If you don't, go to Window and Properties so you actually can see your curve. And we're going to make it nice and big here so you can see what's happening. And just like that, you can see that the curve itself on this image um, has the highlights uh, warm because if you think about it, um, when you bring your curve up in the reds and greens and kind of bring it down in the blue, you get more of an orange color. By the way, side note, this is also a very good tool to learn how to color grade because when you think about it, it's kind of giving you the actual formula of how you need to move the curve in order to get a specific color. Isn't that amazing? And I think that's the best part about this tool. Not even what it does. It's awesome, but it tells me like, hey, let me go and reset this for a second. Let me reset this for a second. Let me move my midtones. So if I go up like this to say like magenta, you can, oops, let me bring that back here. Like, let me just go to like a deep, kind of like purple magenta color. So you can see the curve itself tells me that if I bring my blues up and my reds up, but maybe not as high as my blues and my greens down, I'm going to get this color. And it kind of associates what you need to do from a technical standpoint to a visual standpoint. And this tool is great because even if you're not technical, you can easily understand what's happening without being a technical person like myself. I consider myself a balance, like I'm pretty good visually, but technically I need to sit down and actually understand what's going on. And then it kind of sinks in after a while. But for me, even if I don't have this tool now, because I've played with it for a while, if you're like, you know what, how would you actually get green? I know because now I'm like, well, you push the greens up, but that's not it. You want to bring the blues and the reds down. You're trying to take away any reds and blues from the image, which is what's happening when you pull a curve down. You're taking those colors away. So you're taking away the blues, taking away the reds, and you're upping the greens. And similarly, on a blue, you can see that if I go all the way here to the blue, it brings my blues up and the rest down. And that's how you get absolute blue. So if you know how to do that, and then you can start fiddling around with it and seeing what happens. So if I go from blue, which takes away both of those two and then go all the way to say like purple, you can see now that what happened was that the reds joined the party. So the reds came up and the blues came up and the greens stayed down. And similarly, if you go around, if you go around like this, 
look at the curve itself. It starts playing like skipping rope. And when I first got this, this is exactly what I did. I started playing skipping rope with the curves. And I, anyways, we're just, we're getting off track here. Anyways, so that's how you use the color wheel itself. Now there's a couple of interesting points to mention. Number one is that over here you have a saturation tab. So if I bring this up, it brings the saturation up as well. Also, um, over here it has a luminosity slider. So if I bring it up or down, it actually changes the luminosity of that region. And what I always recommend to people is that if you're going to be color grading specifically in your highlights, shadows, or midtones, make sure you click on activate those points as well so that it actually adds a point in your highlights and your shadows. And just make sure your saturation is all the way down so, you know, it's uh, anchored. It's not causing any color bias. And then when you move the midtones, it'll only work in those specific midtones. So very, very important to know. Um, and similarly, and vice versa, if you're trying to do the same thing for, say, your highlights, you're just going to bring that down. And then in your highlights, you're going to then modify and tweak it so you get exactly kind of what you're, what you're looking for for that specific region. Okay, so that's rule number one. And the other great thing about this is it has different strength values. So if I click on 25%, 50%, and I'm going to bring my luminosity down too. So you can see here that just pay attention to the curves here as I move the strength values up. So this is 50%, 75%, 100%, and 25 and 10. So you can see, I didn't change the intensity of this wheel itself. I basically changed the level and limit that the curves will go when you push this point around the wheel. So this is really handy in case, you know, if you're working on an area with a lot of shadows, this can be very heavy handed and you get the idea. All right. So the next point that I want to mention here, and I'm going to reset this really quick. Let me reset all of them is let's say you're trying to come up with a specific color. Uh, maybe from a swatch, a reference point, whatever. Um, you have these hex values. These hex values are basically the actual identifier for whatever that color is. And then you actually want to click on that color and then say OK. And then it brings a point to whatever color that you've associated with. So if you want to change it, you click on it again, click on the color, and you say OK. And then suddenly now, you get the color that you're looking for. Even cooler is if, you, if you're trying to get the opposite color of that, the exact opposite, you're gonna hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard, and then you wanna click on the color wheel itself, and then now it just bounces between the color that you selected and the opposite of that color. Well, you might be thinking, what's the point of that? Well, a, a use case scenario, sometimes you might have, say, a color cast that happens on the skin. This one doesn't have one, so I'm just going to use it as a general reference. So perhaps you will have a color cast like over here and you want to actually um, maybe actually come up with a different or the opposite color in your highlights. So what I would do here is that I click on my hex color. I'm going to click on the actual highlight color here and say OK. And then I'm going to hold Option or Alt and then click on the color wheel like that. And maybe I might even increase the strength a little bit like that. And then what I could do is because I have a mask, I can easily just, you know, mask in whatever color or that color that I want. Obviously, I'm not going to keep it 100%. Let me bring my flow down to say, I don't know, 5% and then start brushing just a little bit. So you can then start, you know, painting down the opposite color of whatever you wanted. Sometimes you might get a color cast in your highlights or your shadows or something, and you want to correct it, then what you need to do is you click on that color using the hex color value, and then you just use the opposite color and then mask that in, and then it corrects that color cast for you, which is really, really handy. Um, and I think, honestly, that is one of the most powerful features of this, of this, uh, this add-on. The next thing is that aside from using the RGB colors, we can actually use... Um, I'm sorry, instead of just using create and, you know, adding your highlights and your shadows and pay attention. So you notice over here, it starts, you know, curving, which is what curves do. But the absolute highlights and the absolute shadows stay whatever colors they were. But what if you wanted to change that? What if you wanted your absolute shadows and highlights to be different colors and you wanted that to have the most intensity? That is what this button does, this gamma and gain button. When you click on it, it actually now, if I bring my highlights to a specific tone, 
and my shadows to a specific tone, you can see now that when you look at the curve, it's the absolute shadows and the absolute highlights that begin changing color. So the intensity starts up here and then goes into the midtones and levels out. So it's a different way of color grading, um, but depending on whatever you like, I think that is really interesting to know. So gamma and gain is kind of the opposite of create. Um, so I think that is also very handy. For me, I love gamma and gain because when you think of it, gain is like your highlights and gamma is your shadows. Now also, we have these two other buttons called custom create points and load points. What is that? So let's say for, for example, we have, um, I'm gonna say create, and let's take a look at the image. I'm gonna actually click on this hand icon here on the curves because when I click on this hand icon, I can hover over specific points on the image and it's gonna tell me on what point of the curve is that area. So for instance, when I hover over the cheek, you can see here that on the curve itself, it has a circle. It's telling me it's more like kind of in the shadows, right? It's not obviously in the highlights, it's in the shadows. And it's telling me exactly what point it's at in the shadows too. It tells me it's a mid-tone or not. And this is really handy because when you look at an image, you always think the brightest point on the model is the highlight. But sometimes, like on this particular image, um, it actually is, but sometimes it's not. Like sometimes when you look at the cheek, you might see a highlight and you think, oh, that's a highlight but it's actually not a highlight. So when you click on it over here, I mean, it adds a point and it tells me that this point is over here. And if I do that again and I click on the neck, it tells me that that point is over here on the neck. And if I click on the arm itself and I click on it, it adds another point as well. So I can add as many points as I want like this and it adds three points. And maybe I'm gonna add another one like that. And so now I have four points. So what if I actually want to base my color grading on those four points? And it's pretty simple, then I'm just gonna hit load points. And when I do that, it actually changes the color wheel. So now I have four color wheels. So I have one which says custom point 130, custom point 115, and custom point 99, custom point 74. And that correlates to these points here. So custom point 130 is gonna be um, actually one of the points and then I can just keep on going and do another curve here and then do another curve here and then do another curve here. And then let me bring my intensity down because that was ridiculous. So I'm gonna change my intensities here and then I can color grade based on however number of points that I want. Obviously this is a use case scenario. You don't always have to color grade this way, but it gives you the power to do that. And effectively that's pretty much all that there is to the color wheel. And as I mentioned, there's a couple of takeaways I think are really important to know. Number one, this is great for knowing what happens in curves when you actually move the slides around. So if you're trying to get a specific color, you know exactly what the curves are doing to get that color. It's a good learning tool. Number two, it's good to pick the colors that you want because let's say that you know, let me hit create again and it resets everything. If I know that I want my highlights to be that color and I want my shadows to be say this color, it's easy for me to just do that immediately without really trying to adjust anything. Then I can just pick the strength and now I have the color grade um, that I want. The other benefit is aside from that, I can combine this with say like my infinite color panel, which Connie also made and click on light and say I come up with something that I want, like maybe like this. However, maybe I wanna tweak it a little bit further and if I don't know how to really tweak any adjustment layer but I know what color that I'm trying to go for, maybe like I want a cooler color in the shadows, I can then just add another curve, click on my shadows and then drop the curves down so now I have a cooler shadow to work with. And this is the power of this tool is in combination with everything else and with actions and with this tool, it gives me the customization and the flexibility in order to do that. Um, of course, you know, that's really cool. And we even mentioned the ability for using this tool in order to color correct skin, color correct dresses, whatever that you want. You can pick the hex value that you want and then brush it in. So if you, instead of having like a green chair, if I want say like a, like a, a blue chair, I can do that. Well, I need to add the curve first um, and then pick the color that I want like this. And then, you know, if I start say brushing that in, like if taking my brush and then just, let's say bring my flow up for a second. 
and then brushing that in, I can cool down that chair and add a more blue tint to that specific area. And if I change my uh, strength to 100, you can see that it will get all the way blue if I choose to. And obviously my masking sucks right now. I totally understand that, no worries, but you get the idea. The next thing is that you can also correct and accurately color grade by picking customizable points, which is really handy. Um, and then finally, you can also do some color correcting, as I mentioned, in case you have some offending skin tone that you want to correct or color cast or maybe even makeup. The, the possibilities are endless. So even though this, this color wheel is presented in a nice clean package, it can do so many things. And I think I really wanted to make that video to do this panel justice so people can see the potential of this, um, especially because I have really wanted this to be here since since I've seen it in Capture One and si since I've seen it in Premiere and, and DaVinci and all these other programs. So I think Photoshop should finally have its justice and say, to, to bring it into it. And I'm glad for Connie for his retouching toolkit for this. And if you're not familiar with retouching toolkit, it's kind of like an open-ended platform. Um, it's It allows for future development like this to be included in it. And the toolkit itself is something that I'm gonna link in the description in case you wanna see a video about that. And kind of looks like this. You can configure panels and add your color wheels to a specific panel if you wanted it to. And, and it's, it's, it's a whole bunch of fun, but we're not gonna get into that right now. Anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot about it. Um, and please, please, please let us know if you did and uh, please join the Retouching Toolkit um, color, the Facebook group as well. And if you guys are also using the Infinite Color Panel and wanna know more about that, I'll link that in the description as well, which is um, really thankful for Connie about. Anyways, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.